Hello everybody. Okay, this is now working. I also prepared a deck of slides. Um, first of all, I, I got the question before. Where do I press? What is this? Okay, this one. No, the other one. It's this is forward. Okay, this sounds uh, different. Uh, first of all, I got the question: Are you a tech guy? Because uh, on the uh, on on the uh, on the announcement, there was something with finance. Yes, I do finance and controlling, but usually I do tech in finance and controlling. Yeah. Uh, so I studied computer science. It's a long time ago, and I studied Japanese studies. So I'm uh, quite an Asia fan. I have been to Asia a long. Uh, during my childhood nearly every year. Yeah? And uh, what I'm also doing is doing in tech now. I'm a Hyperledger governing board member um, as we joined Hyperledger and then there came the question who wants to do it and I showed it uh, and I said I want to do it. And um, I'm doing also blockchain enablement. So a lot of the things of the project you see uh, comes from uh, my department or different departments where we try to um, uh, leverage the potential that we have there. And now I'm very proud um, that I actually do it because for nine years since I joined the company I was talking about free and open source and I wanted that we leverage it more and more and now actually we have a, a big project going on where we want to do uh, a lot more in this and we have a strategy um, that we want to set up um, to even use that uh, potential more. And I'm very proud of that because uh, I also was one of the guys who was always telling this and now I am also uh, have the task of actually doing it and this makes me even more uh, proud. And my last job is I'm also a model so if you go to the website and want to apply for a job for instance um, then you might also find my, my picture there. <laughs> but I tell you it doesn't pay well. Yeah? Um, so a long time ago this guy said I believe in horses, automobiles and the passing f are a passing phenomenon. Um, this guy wasn't right. Um, we now have quite a big company already. Um, we have 280,000 employees. Uh, we are going from one um, record year to another one and sometimes it's unbelievable how, how good the growth is and how much we do are doing with that. Uh, but it's not only about the car anymore, uh, so we have a new ecosystem and we have Lado here who is the head of CASE. CASE stands for Connected, Autonomous, Shared or Services and Electric. Uh, and this is our new strategy in terms of building new cars. Um, but we also build um, logistic solutions, so trucks or vans and um, um, we have mobility solutions as a, as a third uh, option uh, where you can engage. So also this guy uh, said, I think there's a world market for maybe five computers. It was Thomas Watson, uh, the head of IBM. And now I'm, I'm a little bit curious why actually if Thomas did this kind of uh, predictions, why they named uh, their AI also Watson. Yeah? I hope it doesn't make this kind of predictions. So, uh, cars in the beginning were 100% mechanical hardware. Yeah? This has zero lines of code. The only code there were were these this plans that the guy uh, here uh, draw. Yeah? It went 1885 into production and 1886 it came out. Yeah? Uh, the exp what I found quite interesting is that a lot of the hardware that were built in and the functionality or the, the, the way how the motor was built is still in today's cars and still in today's, mo today's motors still prevalent. Yeah. So, yeah. it has zero flops, needless to say, it doesn't have a CPU in it. So, 100 years later, uh, in, the, in the development of cars, we made already quite an advancement and using this kind of technology at this time I, I really was quite happy that I found this kind of video. Yeah. Um, you can see that we were simulating and using uh, computers to build things uh, and to build cars and even make it even better. And um, also um, the, the interesting thing is that 
Um, at, at that time, we started also to build in small computer chips in terms of um, engine steering and so on into the into the systems, into the cars. Yeah? So this was the very small event of the first um, cars with first computerized cars. I don't know how much flops they had. Yeah? At, at least it weren't giga anything. Yeah? Um, and even nowadays, you can buy chip hacking to get more out of your car. And it's just um, doing something with the software. Um, you have to be careful. It will also void your warranty, usually. Yeah? Um, right. But if you look at the, at the new cars that come out, uh, you quite see that there's a different feel to it. Yeah? It's actually a software masterpiece. We have a lot of different systems in there. And with the new A-Class, we also brought out a new um, interface. Yeah? And it's called MBUX. And King is back. Oh, yeah. Hi, Mercedes. Yes, please? I want some German bread. Please select an entry. I am Mercedes, too hot in here. Can we make it more East Coast? I am setting the temperature to 62 degrees. Why is there a wedding chapel in your suggestions? I am Mercedes, navigate me to what three words? Drive, single, beast. <laughs> Hi Mercedes, where did Jeff drive us last night? Tattoo shop, Las Vegas. So you can see uh, this quite shifted it. Yeah? And I got out the key facts of this uh, of the system, and it's only a front-end system. It has two GPUs in terms of uh, when it's used, it's uh, it's depending on the on the power that we need. Yeah? It has eight gigabyte of RAM and uh, 500 gigaflops, and the operating system is Linux. So you can see that's quite a shift. Yeah? And it's only the front-end computer. We have all safety-relevant parts that are different. We have to think about that as well. Yeah? It has machine learning in it to also know your habits a little bit more and to give you the right suggestions where you should drive or if you always drive to work. And it will already, if you get in, uh, will set you a, a goal where you can go. Yeah? Um, so actually, with this front-end and then uh, several other parts, a car, for me, I'm a computer scientist, is merely a server cluster on wheels. So I ask myself, what do engineers and software engineers actually do have in common? Yeah. And one of our founders, uh, here Gottlieb Daimler, said the best on nothing. And um, I actually it was, was quite hard to find the right quote of Linus Torvalds because usually they are more deflammatory and uh, work on uh, this quote is not so good but I didn't want to get it on the slides because I, I was afraid I won't bring it through the um, to the clearance process yeah if I have uh, get the crap out of my sight uh, something on this on the slide yeah um, but um, the thing is what, what is really what's really important is that um, they have one thing in common and it's the will of making something really the best. Yeah? And the best means is different in every eyes. I had a talk uh, with somebody else here who said uh, is doing design and um, the best for the engineers is not always the best for the user. Yeah? And uh, this is th the same, it stays true with cars. Yeah? Sometimes the engineers get so over, overpaced with, ah, I want to do this and this, and then uh, it's something else that somebody cannot use anymore. Yeah? And we have to also think about that. So what we are doing, what we did last, like, yes, last year was this slide on it. Um, we joined a Linux Foundation. We also are kind of in the Eclipse Foundation. We um, joined uh, Automotive Great Linux and Hyperledger, where I'm also sitting in. And um, we went to the FOSS Asia. And this year, we are again at the FOSS Asia. Yeah? What happened in between? A lot of groundwork uh, from a lot of people who are telling we have to do more. Yeah? And now, I'm quite proud that we have um, Jan Brecht, which is the boss of um, um, the IT. 
in general, this is the CIO of, of Daimler, um, has brought this to his attention, and not only his attention, but there's also a project going on uh, for R&D and um, IT and legal and compliance guys. So he said one of his three top priorities is free and open source software. The others were um, cloud and DevOps, so to um, strengthen the delivery model. And the next one is um, indirect to direct, so bringing people more uh, closer to the code again. Yeah? Because uh, we have a history of doing a lot of management, but management won't produce you any product if you don't have the guys who produce the product. Yeah? And so this is the, the three priorities. It's, it's also public. Um, so why? Why? Actually, the question. So what can we learn as Daimler from the open source community? So what I think is open source and, and the standard um, or, or the way how the open source community work is one of the major things that um, has been now set to the standard actually of software development and we could use that yeah? and we should learn from that so the the whole idea of forking something yeah just taking it away not having it under control um, then patching or doing whatever you want with it and if you deem it good then put in a pull request yeah, and somebody merges it and uh, hopefully merges it, or it says, uh, go away with the scrap, like Linus does it sometimes. Um, but this kind of working actually set a new standard of also distributed working model. Yeah? This has not been possible before. And um, as always, in, in all industries are a lot of um, ideas about how to reduce cost and bringing wo the work, or distributing the, the work all over the world. This means that this is now possible. Yeah. Also, speed of innovation. Yeah. If you have something under tight control and tell people you have to innovate, this is how you innovate, uh, then people won't be as creative as if you won't do it. Yeah. And if you give somebody the chance, I take that, co-create, build something completely new out of it again, and maybe something completely new and something which never has been there before, like blockchain or other technologies come out of it, then we created something which can help to alleviate uh, some others. So this is the, the speed of innovation. And the third part is a community. So working together as a community and uh, collaborating and the way of talking to each other and also looking at the different uh, uh, posts and, and things everybody does and giving kudos to somebody or saying this, this is really good uh, and having an active discussion about the topic, this is also quite um, one of the things that we can learn. Also one of the things that I want to, to stress out, what we shouldn't learn is sometimes um, the way how the open source community uh, strives on egocentricity. Uh, so sometimes uh, it uh, is not anymore about the product, about the part which is in the software. It's more about, I said so and so it has to be like this. And if people on the front fight, then usually something happens, it's a hard fork, and uh, I don't think that usually it helps anybody. Yeah? So we are, or I'm also developing a lot of uh, things in blockchain and I, 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 I think there's analogy here because blockchain uh, means also that you have to collaborate. It's impossible to not collaborate or else you don't get the point of blockchain. Yeah? So you have to have an ecosystem where you build something together and we started, last year we had I think a talk about blockchain here where, where we showed some pilot use cases that we did uh, and uh, during the year, I, I had some more. So uh, we did a first uh, public blockchain hackathon in Stuttgart, which was quite insightful, uh, and a lot of different ideas in there. So this is also a, a quite a form how we how we engage in that even more. Yeah. So we get people from outside in, bringing ideas and elaborating on that and I can tell you we didn't have any rules on that one to that the IP is belongs to us after that. Yeah? So this was quite a, a discussion at some point yeah? uh, but in the end we made it like this. 
And uh, we have another thing here. We have a green driving experiment going on currently. Um, we are trying to incentivize how people drive yeah, and change over that behavior. And this is backed up by a cryptocurrency um, and a standard token uh, in behind. And the greener you drive, the more of those tokens you get. At the moment, you cannot spend them at all. It's just a test. But uh, so where can we go with it? Um, so there's also a, 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 an, an thing I wanted to mention. We are engaging in that in a very long time. So there has been a, a project which is focused on analyzing crash data, because that is, for everybody, it's a good thing. Yeah? And it's called Open MDM and Open Pass. So, so this is th these are the building blocks in our journey, and this is uh, how also kind of how the project is currently structured. Uh, we have, first of all, we have to ensure in compliance. Uh, this is sure. Um, uh, there are a lot of different licenses and too much license actually outside. And um, if you engage in some product or programming and you have to check which license can I use and which license can I not use, it's quite difficult. Yeah? And, but we have to ensure the compliance or else we have lawyers again stepping in. Yeah? And you don't want lawyers uh, messing around with your code. Um, so first of all, we want to adapt the, the collaboration model, which is inner source. Uh, we want to adapt it uh, more and more inside the company. And I'm quite happy that we have now uh, also set up a rule set, at least in IT, that we have to share uh, all our source code. Uh, this is quite new. We want to encourage the usage and even foster more and use and iterate upon uh, the open source. But it's presumptuous to, to think that if you can just take all the time, you also have to give something. So we want to make it possible to uh, engage in communities even more by money, by resources, by ideas, and so on. Uh, and we even want to foster open source contribution, uh, which is, believe me, quite hard if you're legally speaking. Um, so also, I, yeah, I don't think that, I mean, if I come here or if we come here and um, explain something about open source, uh, people might think, yeah, then tomorrow you are there. Yeah, you will do everything. But you have to remember, it is a company of 280,000 people. Yeah? And it's not changing as fast. And not everybody has the same ideas. So we need the right foundations. We need the right um, leverage. Also, we need also the right people behind it. Because also, if I talk, uh, we want to do this, give this kind of software to the open, then somebody in the legal department will ask me, oh, are we not giving that away? And how do we do with the taxes and so on? And that is actually is a quite hard question in a certain sense, because we have to at least clear it. Yeah? And in a big company, you always have a specialist for this kind of questions. So what I'm doing is I'm talking to a lot of different specialists at the moment. But it will lead to that, that if we have a good foundation, we can also have a, a top later on. So in the end, I think um, what I want to give you an offer is that uh, I would like you to join also the way. And uh, I would like us to drive together to this new path and um, to the future. Thank you, Jonas. I have a question for you. Okay. <laughs> so you have mentioned about the green driving, and we'll be getting rewards for that. Yes. For what can we use those rewards? I'm curious. At, the, at the moment, as we are just testing it internally with 500 employees, you can win something. You can win, for instance, a tennis uh, match, or you can win um, going to the uh, Berlin fashion show, um, <laughs> or a DTM race. Um, but the second step after we have like this two, two it's an MVP, so minimum viable product, yeah, not a maximum viable product. Um, after this two months, we will see how we proceed further because we are collecting data and uh, see what it can be used for. But the idea is to expand, yeah? Yeah, the idea is really cool. Thank you so much, Jonas. <laughs>